evening, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, and a very happy Hanukkah to you. I'm so excited to be able to bring you another story for another night of Hanukkah, which comes as a gift from all of us here at the RJC, and to offer my special thanks to my friend Mr. Winter, who's made sure that I would be able to get these stories to you through the magic of modern technology. Tonight's story actually comes from the Gemara, from the Talmud in Masecha Sanhedrin, and it's about King David. It seems that King David was once hunting. Now, I imagine that when King David went to hunt, he didn't go hunting to actually hurt anything. He probably just wanted to get close enough to see Hashem's beautiful creatures close up. Well, he was chasing a particularly beautiful deer, and he really, really wanted a good look. And the deer was running far away, and the deer ran into the land of the Philistines. Now you should remember that David HaMelech had history with the Philistines, because he is the one who had slain their giant, Goliath, with his slingshot and his stones. Well, now he was a king, and he wandered into the land of the Philistines. Oh, and where did he wander? He wandered near the house of a giant named Ishi Benov, who was the brother of Goliath. Well, Ishi Benov had never forgiven David for killing his brother, and he was only too happy to snatch him. And he snatched him, and he pushed an olive press down on him, and David would have been crushed except Hashem made a miracle, and the earth under him was soft. So he sunk down into it and was trapped under the olive press, but he wasn't killed. He was still okay. Well, all of this took place on a Friday morning, and David HaMelech had a general and a friend whose name was Avishai ben Seruya. And as Avishai was preparing for Shabbos in the afternoon, he was washing up from a basin, and all of a sudden, in the basin, he saw drops of blood. Well, he first checked himself to make sure he wasn't bleeding, and he wasn't. And then he looked way high up in a tree, and he saw a dove. And the dove was one by one pulling out feathers and making herself bleed so that the blood would drop into his basin. And Ishi Avishai Tsuruya ben Tsuruya realized the dove was trying to send him a signal. And the signal was, our king David is in some kind of serious trouble. Well, Avishai ran around. First he looked in the places where you'd usually find David HaMelech. He checked in the Beit Knesset in the shul, and David wasn't there. He checked in the Beit Midrash, where David HaMelech was always learning Torah, and he wasn't there. He ran around and checked in different places in the camp, and no David. Well, David had a magic mirror. And what made this mirror magic was that if you whispered into it certain words, you could find where anyone who was missing was located. And David had a magic horse. And this horse could take you anywhere you needed to go in a flash. There was only one problem. David had left strict instructions. No one was allowed to use the mirror except him. No one was allowed to ride the horse except him. Oh, Avishai was so upset. What would he do? So he ran to the Sanhedrin, to the wise rabbis, and he said, You have to help me. You have to help me. David's in some kind of trouble, and I need to use the magic mirror, and I need to ride the magic horse. But the king left orders that no one but him could use them. So the Sanhedrin thought about it for a while, and they argued. And they stroked their beards because, you know, 
that's why rabbis have beards for moments like this. And they decided that since it was a question of danger to David's life, that they would give special, unique, one-time only permission to Avishai to use the magic mirror and the magic horse. Sure enough, Avishai had seen David do it and he knew the magic words and he whispered I know the magic words but I can't say them on the camera because then you'll know them and who knows what will happen when you say them into your mirror. So he did this in the magic mirror and he saw a picture of David trapped under the olive press in the camp of Ishibano, the giant of the Philistines. Oh, he was so upset. He jumped aboard the magic horse and showed the horse the picture in the mirror and in a flash he found himself in the camp of Ishibanov. And who was sitting outside the house of Ishibanov, spinning on a spindle, that means making thread, but his mother whose name was Orpah, the mother of the giants. Well, she was not the nicest lady in the world. And she cut her thread and took the spindle and threw it at Avishai, try, trying to kill him. But he jumped aside just in time. And then she said, Young man, bring me my spindle back. And he took it and he threw it as hard as he could like a frisbee and hit her right in the head. And that was the end of her. Well, when Ishibanov heard the ruckus outside, he ran out and took a look at Avishai. And he said, Rah! He got so angry, he lifted the olive press. You want your king? I'll give him to you. And he grabbed David. He was surprised he was still alive. And he tossed him up in the air and put his spear under him so that David would land on the spear. But Avishai said the name of Hashem. And David floated in the air and didn't come down. And then Avishai said the name again, and David floated to the ground away from the spear as gently as a leaf in the autumn and landed. Avishai grabbed him and threw him onto his horse. And the two of them, with the magic mare, made off for Eretz Yisrael in a flash. Ishibanov was so furious, he started to run after them. Just one problem. He had forgotten that he had thrown down the olive press. And he tripped over his own olive press and banged his head so hard that he was never heard from again. And David HaMelech went and celebrated the Shabbos with his soldiers. And sitting right beside him was his dear, dear friend Avishai, whose courage and wisdom had saved his life. Because, you know, my dears, sometimes you have to disobey a king to save a king. Have a wonderful Hanukkah. May the glow of the candles remain in your hearts until you're 120. Much love. Chag Sameach.